everybody. You're here in my kitchen again. I am going to uh, share with you guys. I'm going to share some recipes that uh, that we use for our family. This can also work for people that have colitis, people with autoimmune problems. Um, I know my husband's been having some problems and um, he can't eat certain things. So I figured I'd, I'd compile a, a few of the recipes that I use to nourish our family on this diet. So see, these are a few of the things that we use for our family or I make for our family and hopefully it'll help you with your, uh, with your specific diet if you're not well. The first option is beef bone broth. You're gonna need some soup bones, make sure it doesn't have any uh, hormones and it's all natural, all natural meat. Uh, you'll need two carrots, you'll need celery, that's almost dead but it'll work, <laughs> green onions, You'll need garlic, as much as you'd like. About an inch of that ginger, not the whole thing. Some cilantro, I like the flavor so I put it in there. Two onions, I used one for this recipe. And about seven bay leaves because I like the taste of it. And some pimento berries. And some organic apple cider vinegar make sure it's from the mother okay we are gonna roughly chop everything up make sure the carrots are as small as um, about an inch so that they can cook properly roughly chop the green onions into about two inch pieces give the cilantro a rough chop the celery you don't have to take the uh, fibers out just give it a rough chop because you're going to strain everything at the end and the onions you're going to take the outer skin the outer layer off of the onion and leave the inner layer of the skin on that contributes to the nice golden color that you get and of course you don't have to eat it so it's fine we will then put everything into the pot I have an insta pot you can use a slow cooker make sure you put the slow cooker on high for about uh, I'd say nine hours in a slow cooker I used about uh, I did about five hours or four, about four to five hours on the Instapot. And you put some distilled water. I'm pouring about about half cup apple cider vinegar. And I'm setting the time there. I used poultry and I manually set the time to the highest. Now... Five hours later, I left this overnight on keep warm. You're gonna need some glass jars and a strainer, a ladle, and the measuring cup there to, to pour it out. Mix everything up. Make sure everything is nice and soft. The bones will be very soft. You can crumble them with your hands and you ladle everything into the measuring cup it's gonna be a little hot so afterward you're gonna leave it out to cool and you'll see two layers there one layer is fat the bottom layer is what you need but when you pour it into those jars those layers are gonna separate as it cools and you'll end up with a thick white layer on the top and your bone broth on the bottom 
the bone broth is gonna become jelly like with all the collagen in there that's a good stuff and you can use the upper layer to cook like you would use butter but I don't I discard it after I use everything chocolate banana popsicles now this one is for those that came off the sugar on this diet and still crave sugar and it's also for people that want healthy snacks okay you're gonna get some bananas not too ripe uh, I got the popsicle sticks from your dollar your general store dollar store will have them you just want to uh, get some popsicle sticks or you can use straws and you're going to stick the banana on there and you're going to put it on your wax paper now you're going to put this in the fridge for about four to five hours just so the banana is firm and partially frozen and uh, after the four to five hours you can make your chocolate syrup now I'm using Baker's chocolate it doesn't have a lot of additives and coconut oil will make it thinner if you want a thicker uh, chocolate sauce you use less coconut oil when you melt it I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna break the chocolate up into small pieces so that it can melt faster and I'm going to add two and a half tablespoons of coconut oil it's very good for you and it's good when you're dealing with you know different types of illnesses it's fine okay now you're gonna get a small pot put some water inside and you're gonna bring it up to a boil I'm putting it on number six on the stove so that it can get to a boil faster and that's what it looks like when it's melted now I'm gonna take the fro partially frozen bananas and I'm coating it with the chocolate sauce it's gonna get pretty dry it's gonna it's gonna cool off as soon as you put it on there because the banana is cold and the sauce is a bit thin so you're gonna do that that looks really good <laughs> I don't know if chocolate would affect you and your diet but we use chocolate for this homemade probiotic sauerkraut, we're going to use some jars, a rolling pin, something with a flat surface, and some organic cabbages. Some sea salt. You can use pickling salt. That would be much better if you prefer that. But I use sea salt. We're going to take all the lids off and use that bowl remove the core from the cabbages make sure you wash it first you're gonna want to use something organic so that because we're using the cabbages would naturally release their own liquid so we don't want anything that has fertilizers or grown commercially for this recipe and we're shredding the cabbage by hand we're gonna put it into the bowl now we're gonna just do layers of salt and cabbage we're gonna put salt on top of the cabbage because now we're, this is the hard part we pound it we have to pound the cabbage until it releases its own juices so the salt acts as an abrasive uh, an abrasive type substance for the cabbage to you know as we pound it and mash it up and after a while you're going to see the water starting to be released 
and it's going to fill the jar up. Probiotic ginger bug soda. This is a, not a natural probiotic. We're using some dark brown sugar. You'll need a jar. I like dark brown sugar because it has more molasses in it. You'll need tissue and a rubber band, a tablespoon, some ginger. We're going to use about an inch of this ginger. We're going to chop it up really small. The smaller the surface area of the ginger, the, the, the sooner the probiotics going to be made. The ginger bug's going to grow much faster. What it is is an is pretty much a microorganism that is a probiotic. We're using it, we get it naturally from our environment. And you're going to chop this up. We're going to use two tablespoons of ginger to about two tablespoons of dark brown sugar. We're going to give it a mix with some distilled water, not much, about half a cup. And what we do is every day or every other day, we add just as much ginger and just as much sugar every other day until it develops a gassy film on the top of it and that's when we know it's ready it starts to it becomes aerated or I should say carbonated it looks carbonated it tastes carbonated and that's when we know our ginger bug is ready for the soda We put the lid on something where air can come through and we're going to put it away in a nice warm place for a couple days. Now we're going to make a syrup for this ginger bug soda. We're going to need some fruit, any type of fruit. I'm using cranberries. It's quite tart so I'm going to have to use a lot of sugar. The ginger bug is going to eat up the sugar so we don't have to worry about any of the sugar affecting us. And we're going to use two lemons. We need about two to two and a half cups of sugar for this recipe. You can use less if you want. We're going to use some cinnamon. I like to add some spices to my concoction. And you can find some sweet orange peel or any other uh, brewing herb at your local brewers or uh, you know a wine shop they sell it really cheap and I'm gonna put a palm full of that into the big pot we're gonna boil it with half a gallon of water then we're gonna use a gallon jar with an airlock and we're going to put this syrup and add the ginger bug to it and brew it for about a week. Okay everybody this concludes our video. Remember preparation is a must. Make sure you stock up on items like bananas, grapes, dates, chicken, and fish. If you're having a condition that's hard to deal with, you're going to want to have these foods readily available for you to snack on or eat. And you're going to have to look for lots of spices. Make sure to use lots of spices to keep things interesting. You don't want bland food. The options are not a lot. So learn how to use your spices, those without additives, no MSG. Uh, you know, sometimes when you have IBS or IBD, 
you want to avoid foods like dairy, lots of tomatoes and tomato sauce and tons of cheeses. Stay away from those things. You can flavor food other ways. Remember to always shop the freezer aisle in your grocery store. Buy your frozen vegetables. Get some sesame oil and make interesting stir fries. Buy some frozen fruit and prepare smoothies with some natural organic honey. I mean, the options are endless. Have some boiled eggs on hand. Use coconut milk instead of dairy. Uh, find some without additives and without preservatives and that would be great. Okay, I hope this helps anyone that needs help. And... I know that when I was looking for some options, I couldn't find it, so I made a video. Enjoy and be blessed. Bye.